Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's Power Session. Very excited to be with you today. I am Paul Blanchard, president of Habit Finder. We are going to be talking about carrots today. We're going to be talking about your why. We're going to be talking about your dreams, your goals. We're talking about some of the things that people are being taught out there in widespread droves that are wrecking your ability to be able to do this well, to be able to create what you want and actually enjoy it when you get there, if you even can, based on some of the challenges that people are experiencing out there. Over the last several years, your why, your mindset has become these these buzzwords, these uh, provocateurs of getting you to invest in stuff that doesn't necessarily get you where you want to go. And at Habit Finder, we wanna dive into the math We want to dive into the science. We want to dive into principles that can actually create the alignment in the brain to create what you want. That's what we do. That's what we focus on. And here in these power sessions, that's what we're going for, putting the power back in your hands to understand your mind just a little bit better, to be able to hear the conversations just a little bit clearer so that eventually you can start participating in those conversations in your mind and eventually start dictating those conversations to be able to create what you deserve, and more importantly, what a lot of people underestimate, be able to actually enjoy what you create. The last thing we want to do is be able to create our dreams, create what we want, and not have it get any traction, not have it be able to serve us. So we are going to go ahead and kick this thing off and get started as we always do. Here we go. Good afternoon, good morning, depending on where you are. Excited to be with you today. Fresh haircut. Thank you for noticing, Bobby. Just for you all here on the Power Session and everybody else. We're excited to be here today because we are talking about something I love to discuss, and it's carrots. Carrots are a super important part of your life, not the nutritional factors of carrots, not the vitamin K or whatever you get from carrots that apparently helps your eyesight, whatever it is, we're talking about the symbolic carrot. We're talking about that dangling dream or goal or why or motivation that we want to create in our life that we're trying to go after to be able to take a bite of, to be able to make the journey, as Augmentino would call it, across the dry deserts worthwhile, to be able to have the persistence the vision, the drive to get across that dry desert and get to, yes, the green grass. That's what we want to focus on today. Carrots are instrumental in doing this, in case you didn't know. And a lot of people have learned to dangle their own carrots. A lot of people have been drawn in to other people dangling carrots for them to be able to drive them. Now, this came from having a mule or a donkey or a horse where if you would just put a stick across their back and dangle a carrot out there, they would continue to walk forward, continue to take one step after another, hoping that they would eventually reach that carrot with a very rote, um, very deeply ingrained instinctual response to wanting to eat it. Now, those of you who are uh, of the mule mindset, okay, of the donkey variety, okay, thinking of the colloquial term for a donkey, Uh, this is not for you because you're going to be perfectly just fine putting one foot in the other in front of the other going after something that you're never actually going to be able to consume. Uh, And even if you do ever get the opportunity to consume it, it's never going to be as good as you hoped it would be unless we're able to actually build an appetite for carrots. And that's what I want to talk about today. What are the three keys to building this appetite in such a way that the big carrots, the big why, the big dreams can actually become something that you can create in your life? So let's dive in. All right. Number one, in terms of creating this appetite for carrots and being able to create the habits that will support us in our dream creation, in discovering our why and what we're driving. The first key that we want to remember is bigger is not better. 
Bigger is not better in terms of carrots, in terms of your why, in terms of your dreams and your motivations. We have seen this play out time and time and time again. Uh, we work in with primarily entrepreneurs, startup companies, home-based businesses, um, you know, all these kind of uh, sole proprietorship. And one of the great challenges we see is when someone has the impetus to start their own business, to be able to join an opportunity, to be able to get into real estate for the first time, into insurance or, or oils or health products or whatever it is. It's usually a very simple reason. It's usually a very clear thing that they wanted just a little extra money or they wanted this or they wanted that. And then suddenly they get in and they start attending these events and start reading their books that tell them if you have a big enough why, everything else will take care of itself. If it is elaborate enough, if it is real enough and it is huge is what you hear all the time. You just need a bigger why. If you're not working, if you're not driving, if you're giving up prematurely, it's because you don't have a big enough why. Okay. Let's see in the chat. I'd love to see it. Has anyone ever heard this before? Have you ever been taught that one of the things you've got to have to be able to create success is a big why? You need a big reason, a big motivation. And if you're stuck, if you're having challenges, it's because your why isn't big enough. Anybody? Anybody at all heard this before? This is very commonplace. I've been to many events as a uh, as a participant and as a speaker, and I've heard this everywhere. It's a very popular mentorship thing. You need a big why. It needs to be deeper and bigger and stronger and more powerful. Number one key to developing an appetite for carrots, for being able to find the consistency to be able to stay focused on what you're doing and to be able to persist and to be able to win the game, as Og said, that if I will persist, I will succeed, is to realize that bigger is not better. Better is better. You will want a better why, not a bigger why. And what makes a why better? What makes a why better is that it is real. It is tangible. We will actually believe that it's possible, not because we have these powerful visualizing law of attraction visions for it and intentions, but because our even our cognitive, our logistic mind will go, yeah, we could totally do that. We could accomplish that. We could get 200 bucks a month of extra money. We could pay off that $1,500 credit card. We could do this or that or whatever it is. We could, we could generate some extra money to be able to go out on a date once a month and have it be a little nicer, whatever it is, fill in the blank, but it's not a matter of it being bigger. That will tank so many of us because the bigger it gets, we end up becoming like Atlas for our why. And we're trying to carry this why across the, the, the dry desert that we're talking about. And it kills us. We don't want to carry things across that that are going to make the journey even more difficult. We want to find things that will draw us out, that will draw us from within rather than things that will push on us and will weigh on us. So number one, to being able to do this in a way that can actually support you and be more fulfilling and more inspiring is that bigger is not better. Don't look for the bigger why. Look for the better why. And the better one is the one that's real. Okay. We can explore the bigger ones but to feel like there's some requirement that those need to be vivid and detailed and thought out and, and you need to be able to plan all the way across to be able to do those things, no, no more. No more. We're going to surrender. We're going to give up the bigger why for now and realize that the way we get to the bigger carrots is by building an appetite for smaller ones. And the smaller ones are the more real ones, the ones we can consume right now. Yeah, it's fun to dream about big elaborate things for some people. For many of you, in fact, on this call, it might be a kind of a guilty experience. You feel guilty to dream about such big things for yourself. There's a lot of us out there that have been conditioned to believe we don't need the nice car. We don't want the nice house. Nice, by the way, doesn't mean to need, doesn't need to mean big or elaborate, but it could be nice. You know, nice car doesn't mean it needs to cost $150,000. But, you know, it, it could be something that was actually created or built on this planet within the last couple of years versus 15 years. We've got it paid off. We're amazing. And that's awesome. If that's your goal, if that's your focus, that's your why is to is to not have debt, then great. 
But if you're expecting that to drive inspiration, you're expecting that to drive creation and abundance at a large scale, it's not going to. But we want to build the, the better carrots first. We want to build the better whys as we're going through this. So, so that's number one is get rid of the idea that it needs to be bigger and just start focusing on making it better, which to do that is to make it more real. Number two, start with why now. Why now? Not why then. That's another massive mistake I see so many people make in terms of building these carrots of, oh, I'm going to want to be able to create orphanages in Africa and wells in, in the Middle East and to be able to do all these different things that are so future oriented. That it sounds amazing when you're at that event talking to you about your why and the business you're going to join and how it's going to change your life and you're finally going to be able to do all these amazing things. But as soon as you get back Monday morning and it's time to get to work, ooh, that carrot will feel so far away, so far away that it is nearly impossible for the brain to be able to visualize it vividly enough, have enough evidence for it to be able to drive you to it because of the distance that you'll feel. And it will differ and differ and differ. It's the same experience people have when they're like, I am going to lose 50 pounds. And they get on the scale the first day and it's down one pound. And they go, oh, man, it's too far away. It's too far away. So what we want to do is we want to step back. And now that we've let go of it needing to be bigger, which is crushing so many of us, now we're going to not go Okay, what is my why, which then we feel like needs to be our life story in reverse, needs to be some deep, profound, poetic representation of who we are as an individual. No, it can just be why right now. Why right now? I was in a group coaching session with a young lady the other day who is really struggling to grow her business. And I asked her why she started it. Why did you start your business? And she said, because I wanted some soda run money. And I wanted to have a new way to make some friends. And she she, she had a why that wasn't massive. It was real. And it was about why right now. And guess what it did? It worked. It totally worked. She rocked it to a place where she had $800 a month supporting her in her business. In a business that 98% of people never make more than $200 a month. 98%, and she's doing 800 a month inside of a year with no major capital investments, okay? It may not sound like the six-figure, seven-figure presentations you have, but it's pretty awesome, okay? So where she's at, when she started with why right now, it worked, but then she got into the business. She read the books. She heard from the gurus and the influencers about having these big, elaborate whys and she started creating a bigger and bigger gap from soda run money and making some friends to something that she felt like was supposed to be deeper and more profound and more elaborate. And the bigger that gap got, the harder it became to do her business because the less fun it was, the less simple it was. And it started to crush her. It started to demotivate her. That's one of the challenges is if we Let's live by the sword, die by the sword. If you are apt and sensitive to needing to be motivated, then you're going to be just an apt and sensitive to be demotivated. So we want to look more for what inspires us by surrendering the bigger and going after the better and by being able to start with why now. And why now can be simple. You want to lose weight, you get in, you get into the right program to lose weight, to get healthy. You're going to find out it's about a lot more than a diet. You're going to find it's a lot more than just um, than just losing some poundage. But it's okay to start there. It's okay if that's why right now, because I want to look good in that swimsuit, or I want to finally fit in those jeans from high school, or, or I just want to not feel so bloated. Just keep it simple. And when in doubt, when you're feeling disjointed, you're feeling disconnected from what you're doing, why right now can be okay. And why right now might even sound materialistic. So to run money, okay? It might sound vain for some people. I want to be able to pay for Botox. Like whatever, who cares? It's your why. And it can be your why for right now. And then as you get on the path, as you start heading towards the next carrot of some soda run money, the next carrot of making some friends, the next carrot of just a little bit more, Okay, 
then you can start to take on number three, which is building evidence. Building evidence. So your brain has these pleasure centers. Your brain has these, these chemicals that it can use to have you feel, oh, to feel good. And it loves feeling good and it loves coming up with reasons to feel good. But just like caffeine and other stimulants, if we overuse them, they'll have a less potent effect. And we'll need more and more and more. And eventually we have dopamine depletion and we have all kinds of problems where the normal emotional payoffs of accomplishment have now been lost through this dry desert of these giant carrots and these other things. What we will want to do is build evidence. Evidence that the dry desert doesn't last forever. Therein lies the challenge of these big, elaborate, profound, deep whys. As we go to start marching across the desert, and although we know it ends, it doesn't feel like it's going to day in and day out. And feelings will beat your vision of a giant carrot all day long. You come in day in, day out, feeling like this dry desert is never going to end. You do that over a year, two years, five years. Man, A, you're not going to get there, or B, you're going to get there and you're going to resent it and not even realize that you do. Because you've taught your brain to always go after what isn't right here, right now. I need to go out after what will be. I need to go after there, not here, because here is not where I want to be. I want to be there. We don't realize we're training the brain to always love there and never be able to love here. So what happens when there becomes here? We can't love it. We can't find fulfillment from it because our brain just needs to find a new there, a new big carrot. So when we're building evidence, we're going to want to munch on some carrots along the way. We're going to want to build evidence that there are emotional payoffs along the way. And the bigger your why is, the longer the dry desert, and the more likely you are to not have the stamina yet to get across it. Eventually, we want to be able to eat the giant carrot. We want to create the stuff that we never thought was possible in our lives. But the way to do that is to do what you can do right now and do it more intentionally. When we build evidence, we take some of the escapes we used to have in our lives and we make them dreams. We make them carrots. We make them payoffs. Okay? We just become a little bit more intentional about them. For example, it can be as simple as, for example, uh, Bose has new headphones coming out at the end of this month. And I want them. So I set a couple of goals and I made a couple of agreements with myself and they were met and I pre-ordered them. And I'm super excited for them. Now, am I in a place where I could have just bought them? Sure. And most of you are probably in a place where you could have justified them if you really wanted to figure it out or put it on this credit card or do this or do that. You, you, most of us are doing that every day. Most of us don't want to total up what we actually buy on Amazon every month. We'd rather just have it go into the blur of another Amazon charge on our bank account, okay? Or what we get at Target when we really meant to just go get these things and we ended up with all this stuff. Or the you know undying joke of Costco where you cannot go in and spend less than 500 bucks at Costco. So we're already, most of us are already buying things we don't need, like we don't really hardcore necessity kind of need. Imagine if you were able to convert those to something you bought as evidence to your brain that, hey, you get this because you're headed the right direction. You get this pretty perfectly said because you just had these small wins because you deserve it. You deserve to have this. If you think that you can bypass deserving $300 Bose headphones or, or even a $20 night out of, of, uh, of takeout with your spouse on a date night or whatever. whatever. I'm not worried about whatever scale it is for you. For some of you, spending five bucks might be a really big deal. For others, spending $5,000 might be a big deal. But I'm just asking you to pay more attention to doing it on purpose. Okay, I'm not here to say you need to be stricter with your budget. Now, if you are headed to bankruptcy, yes, get some help. Figure that out. If you're gambling away your retirement and your savings, then yes, get some help. But for most of us that are pretty reasonable, you're fudging here and there on stuff. But if you're doing it as an escape, you're doing it unconsciously. You're doing it because it was just an impulsive, I'm at Target or I'm on a online or whatever, and you're just doing it. You're missing an opportunity to turn that into a catalyst, to turn that into evidence that I get rewarded on my way to the bigger carrot. 
That's how we sustain the journey to the big carrots. That's how we develop an appetite for carrots. We want to be able to challenge our self-esteem now, challenge our worthiness now with little carrots, because there is no magic fairy that's suddenly going to be like, hey, now you deserve this giant carrot, even though you felt like you didn't deserve all these carrots along the way. That doesn't make any sense. If you don't think you're worthy of these little carrots along the way, you're going to get closer to the bigger carrot and sabotage the living daylights out of yourself because of that internal thermostat of your self-esteem that believes what you are and are not worthy of. So start proving to it now that you're worthy of these little things, these little catalysts, these little carrots. Start proving to yourself now that you don't need a bigger why, you just need a better why. And better doesn't mean deep, profound, poetic. Oh my gosh, that sounds like something you should speak about at a UN conference. No, it's something that is real to you. Something that will get you out of the more out of the bed this morning. Doesn't even need to be admirable or noble if it gets you out of bed this morning. And as you're on the path, as you're finding your consistency, you can develop into more and more and more and deeper and deeper and bigger and bigger along the way. So let's let go of the need for this bigger why. Let's start with why now, and let's build evidence along the way that there are rewards for this journey and that we don't need to go into deprivation to get a bigger reward. Too many of us from old school thinking, you got to put in the time, put in the hours, put in your 40 years, and then you get your watch and your retirement. No, we are in a day and age technologically, creatively, psychologically, where you don't necessarily have to do everything to create your dreams. Sacrifice needs to be involved, yes. Challenges need to be, they're all ingredients in the recipe. Man, the days of I've got to put the time in now so I can enjoy it later are why you have so many rebellious millennials and Gen Zers and whatever else you want to, you call them out there, because they saw too much evidence that living life like that is not worth it. It's not worth it to wait for what it's going to be like when. I'm not suggesting you finance your dreams now. Oh, well, I have a $15,000 credit card, and I've always wanted to go to Italy, so let's book it. Let's go. No, find out where your means are and start to be intentional with what you already have to create a catalyst over to creating just a little bit more and then creating just a little bit more, but rewarding yourself intentionally, not because you justified it in the checkout aisle or while you're browsing on your phone before you fell asleep. Yeah, I deserve that. No, put a plan together for it. Be intentional about what you're going to do or what you did do to deserve that, to make it a psychological, emotional, neurological catalyst to build evidence for the bigger whys you're going to tackle later on. I hope that all of you will step back and consider this. Consider that if you are really stuck right now, if you're not able to get going where you are, uh, from where you are right now, a couple of things are going on. One is you probably feel confused. You probably feel like you don't know where to start. And that's just your brain telling you we don't want to start where we are. And so you got to say, brain, step aside. We're going to get to work. And we're going to start with the simple baby steps that are right in front of us. And once we started getting to work, we're going to realize we don't need these big elaborate whys unless we've already built the stamina and the evidence. And you'll know you've done that because you've got a real estate portfolio and you've you've paid off your house and you're making a significant income and, and whatever else. And you've done other things along the way. But if you're not in that place, start building an appetite for carrots, not the big ones, the little ones. And start with the carrots that matter to you right now, not the ones that are going to matter to you 20 years from now. We can get to those things. But we're going to want to make sure that it's not a big, long, dry desert between here and there. And that's what happens when we make a bigger and bigger why. And we don't start with why now. And be focused on daily opportunities to build evidence, not escapes. Not an escape to have the relief of, oh, this feels so good. Like I know a company that just canceled their incentive trip, as most companies are doing right now this year. And a lot of people that were looking forward to the relief of that incentive trip are very angry about it. 
But the people who were already building an appetite for carrots realized, wow, I can go on that kind of trip anytime because I did the things for the right reasons to be able to build evidence, not to be able to escape. And that's a beautiful way to build a business. It's a very passion-driven, very exciting way to live your life. So please, let us step back and stop coming up with a bigger and bigger carrot and start building an appetite for carrots with the little ones, the intentional ones, the real ones, the why right now. And let us build evidence to be able to build confidence to accomplish anything. Thanks for being on today. Appreciate your attention. Appreciate your time. Appreciate your love. Everybody take care. Be safe. Be kind. We look forward to seeing you back here next week to talk about the next pattern, the next idea we want to disrupt to give us an opportunity to move forward in our lives. As always, if you have not taken the Habit Finder, go do it. It's a free carrot for now. So you want to take an opportunity to be able to jump on there and take that. You know people in your life that haven't taken it. Invite them to take that. There's no other tool like it. No other tool like it that can take you beyond personality, which way too many people are wasting their time with right now. I don't mean to be negative about that, but too many people are getting so caught up in what number they are, what animal they are, what color they are. And it becomes a box that restricts their progression. It becomes an explanation for why that didn't work for them. And I, I am on a mission to be able to shatter all those things. And it starts by getting to the depth of how you think, not who you think you are. So please give us an opportunity to be able to take you a little bit deeper, to be able to serve you and uh, looking for an opportunity to, uh, to be able to help you create greater success because you deserve the bigger carrots. It's just time to start teaching you how to actually get them. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for being here. Have a great day.